Swadi Krupp and welcome to Thailand Top Stories. Now today we're reporting about an awful murder in Bangkok yesterday. It looks like things are slowly closing in around the Burmese junta in Myanmar. This time Facebook are flexing their muscle and that might make a big impact. As a car drives past, yes, I'm broadcasting from my garden. And the other thing that's happening is that the Bank of Thailand now are saying that things are not going to be looking too bad, but it's at least a couple of years away. All that and more coming up in Thailand Top Stories. A man in Bangkok has been charged with the brutal murder of his mother after she was found stabbed and with plastic bags wrapped tight around her head and neck. The murder took place uh, in the Lumpini district of Bangkok, where the 26-year-old engineer allegedly killed his mother in a wild attack in the food court where she worked, according to witnesses that contacted the police. Police arrived at the Mahatun Plaza building on Plunchit Road, where witnesses were still trying to comprehend the crazy events that had just unfolded. Witnesses directed the police to a room that the unnamed suspect had locked himself in while committing the murder. Officers were able to convince him to come out and surrender after negotiating with him. He was taken to the Lumpini police station. His 60-year-old mother was found dead in the room, covered with blood with four plastic bags over her head that had been closely tied around her neck. Police recovered two knives on the floor by her body. Witnesses say that the man went crazy without apparent provocation and suddenly attacked his mother, killing her. He's being held in custody, awaiting formal charges. Thailand's public health ministry today said that a 41-year-old Thai man who arrived from the Congo via the Test and Go program is likely to be the fourth Omicron case of, in the kingdom, adding that the results will be out today or tomorrow. The Test and Go entry scheme is for fully vaccinated travellers from selected countries. Reports say the man had previously received two AstraZeneca injections. On Wednesday, two Omicron cases were announced from two Thai nationals returning from Nigeria on November the 24th. Their tests were later reviewed again following the emergence of the Omicron variant and came out positive for the mutated strain. Meanwhile, the Thai government is poised to loosen restrictions even more now that the situation generally has begun to improve. The CSA spokeswoman says they'll meet on Monday to discuss further loosening of restrictions as the number of infections in Thailand continues to decline and the national vaccination drive continues to make significant progress. A government spokesperson also reported that PM Prayut chan cha is pleased with the improvement as almost 263,000 coronavirus vaccine doses were dished out yesterday, increasing the total to over 95 million doses. Thailand's economy could recover to pre-pandemic levels as soon as the first quarter of 2023. That's according to the Bank of Thailand governor. He says the recovery will be slow and uneven across business sectors. He was speaking at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs CEO Forum. I wasn't invited. He noted that Thailand's tourism sector and related downstream industries had been the hardest hit. The central bank predicts that about 6 million foreign tourists could visit Thailand next year. That's some 34 million fewer than the 2019 total. Other related good news and Finnair has become the first international airline to resume regular flights to Krabi with the operation of a four times weekly service between Helsinki and the southern tourist province. The TAT governor says Finnair is an important inbound airline for Thailand's tourism industry, bringing quality tourists from Finland and the Nordic market. The resumption of Finnair Helsinki to Krabi route is good sign for us. The first Finnair flight arrived in Krabi on December the 1st and regular flights kicked off two days ago. Yesterday we reported a number of new regular flights operating into Phuket with even beleaguered Thai Airways adding three weekly direct flights from Sydney into the holiday island. Sean Stenning from Five Star Marine. 
uh, across the other side, we've got Krabi and the Hong Krabi. They've been doing quite a lot of work during the, uh, the downtime. Yeah, National Park's been amazing out there. They've built probably the best viewpoint that I've ever seen. Uh, you're going to go up and then right at the top, you're going to see every island in this area. You're going to go look around over Pang Na Bay, Hong Krabi, Pee Pee, Yao Ya, Yao Noi, and it's stunning and it looks right over a lagoon. Just the most stunning thing. So Hong Krabi is about, uh, what, 45 minutes from Phuket? Yeah, 45 minutes out there, uh, 16 islands in the Hong Krabi area. Yeah, and a beautiful viewpoint, nice mix of snorkeling and sightseeing, um, and one of my favorite beaches out there, a little paradise beach. Okay, that was the one in the mechanic? Uh, well, that's one of the ones out there, and yes, uh, you know, I still hope to see Jessica Elba out there one day. Okay, and on your way back from Krabi, you visit this little spot. Yeah, this is Koh Rang Ye, just a little private island, nice little spot to come relax and uh, maybe watch the sunset before heading back in. This looks like the perfect little tropical island with the palm trees. I think this is what you see in the postcards, right? This is where they're going to do the remake of Gilligan's Island. <laughs> okay, Sean, thank you very much. Back to you, Jet. The Deputy Transport Minister has been appointed to lead an extraordinary House committee of 60 members studying a proposal to open a casino entertainment complex in Thailand. He declared that such a venue would attract foreign visitors and make additional revenue for the government. Subcommittees would prepare a feasibility study to weigh up the pros and cons. The Minister has been given 90 days to report back to the House with the committee's findings. The scope of the committee will look at revenue and tax collection from legalised casinos and measures to deal with Thailand's numerous illegal dens and online gambling activities. Gambling is officially illegal in Thailand, although the government runs a bi-monthly lottery and low-level community gambling is ubiquitous around the country. Police were investigating a fatal car crash where the driver of a farm truck was killed, injuring two others in the Chok Chai district in Nakhon Ratchasima province early yesterday morning. The accident was caught on a black box footage of a passing by vehicle, later circulated on Facebook. The farm vehicle turned right to enter a gas station but cut in front of an oncoming 18-wheeler. The truck was struck on the left side and collided into a Toyota Vigo pickup. One side of the pickup was heavily damaged. The 75-year-old truck driver was killed. His body was transferred to the Chok Chai Hospital for autopsy. His wife, a passenger in his truck, was injured, as was the trailer truck driver, a 23-year-old. We're checking out the region and starting from December 13 onwards, tourists with a two-week travelling history in France will be barred from entering the Philippines amidst fear of the new variant Omicron. France has been added to the Philippines' red list of countries after more than 20 cases of the new COVID variant were discovered. Tourists who are travelling to the Philippines from tomorrow until Sunday will also be subject to a 14-day quarantine. Filipinos returning from France can only rejoin the nation through properly regulated government or non-government charter flights. And Myanmar's military junta chief has woken up this morning to find his partly owned telecom company, Mitel, being barred from Facebook as Meta, Facebook's new company name, started to ban businesses related to the Tatmadaw, that's the Burmese military. The move came just hours after lawyers from the US and the UK launched a 150 billion lawsuit on behalf of Rohingya refugees, alleging that the social media network was used to foment violence against the minority population. Rights groups and UN investigators have been calling out Meta to take down Myanmar military-associated businesses from advertising on its platform. Facebook has become the go-to social media for Burmese people since the junta seized power in February this year. More than 730,000 Rohingya people have fled the Rakhine state since August 2017 due to military, mass executions, gang rapes and arson as part of a genocidal campaign. A Facebook employee told local media outlet Myanmar Now that the firm had taken action against hundreds of additional accounts and pages linked to military-controlled enterprises, including Mitel. 
Well, that's the way we see things around Thailand and the region on this public holiday. Yes, the second public holiday in a week. That makes a long weekend last weekend and a long weekend this weekend. If you're in Thailand, I hope you enjoy the long weekend. If you're not, well, I hope you enjoy the weekend anyway. We'll certainly be back on Monday. In the meantime, we've got uh, Jay and Natty on Good Morning Thailand, bringing you up to date with other news and views. And uh, we're going to have a few changes on our YouTube channel in the next few weeks. We're trying a few new things out and we're cleaning up a few other little things. Hopefully you'll enjoy the changes. Of course, we always appreciate your subscription. You can do that by just clicking below. It doesn't cost you anything, but from all of us here, you're up to date on the Tiger.